It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. John S. Young, noted commentator and writer. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Gordon R. Clapp, Chairman of the Tennessee Valley Authority. Mr. Clapp is head of the Tennessee Valley Authority. You have, uh, you head one of the most controversial enterprises in America. And uh, now, sir, do you have the same position today that was held for so long by Mr. David Lilienthal? That's right, Mr. Huey. I took, uh, succeeded to Dave Lilienthal when, uh, uh, when he was appointed chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. And you've been with the uh, TVA for about 20 years, I believe. Yes, I'm about to celebrate an anniversary. I think in uh, July 1933 was uh, my entry to the TVA. Well, during that 20-year uh, period, sir, that you've been there, why, you people have spent about a billion dollars of the American taxpayers' money. And you now employ about 22,000 people. And uh, first of all, what benefits have you brought to the people of the Tennessee Valley with all of that effort? We have uh, uh, taken the Tennessee River, that was uh, a river that often went into disastrous floods and have tamed those floods. Uh, flood dangers are no longer uh, uh, present in the Tennessee Valley except at one place uh, near Chattanooga. We have uh, made that Tennessee River a navigable stream on which uh, trade and commerce between the Middle West and the Southeast is an ever-growing thing. We have uh, helped to increase the income of the people of the Tennessee Valley, and that has uh, increased their uh, purchasing power and made of them a new market for uh, industries and manufacturers from all over the country. And on top of that, of course, the uh, greater uh, agricultural and industrial development of the Tennessee Valley has, has increased the productivity of a great region of these United States and has uh, uh, added new jobs for people. Well, now, uh, Mr. Clapp, that's uh, all very good for the Tennessee Valley, but I'm interested in, in the people of the state of New York and the state of California and the rest of the nation. Now, uh, the consumers were obtaining power from private companies pay large taxes, from large federal taxes, while consumers of government and federal power pay little, if any, taxes at all. Do you think that's fair, that there is a consummate amount of concentration wealth being uh, financed by the government, but to the negligence or to the neglect of other parts of the country, such as our own? I think, uh, Mr. Young, there's a fair balance in equities uh, when you look into it uh, closely. The uh, uh, people of the Tennessee Valley, in the first place, will uh, pay back through their power uh, bills all of the investment that's put into the power part of uh, this federal expenditure in the Tennessee Valley. Well, in addition to that, sir, what benefits will the people of Wisconsin and California and New York get from the development of the Tennessee Valley, specifically? They've already uh, received many benefits. Just let me uh, summarize them very quickly. In the first place, uh, one must remember that of this billion dollars, more or less, the TVA has spent of federal money, over half of it has been spent outside the Tennessee Valley for equipment and, uh, and uh, machinery that goes in these uh, dams and powerhouses. Uh, on, uh, in addition to that, the increased purchasing power that has uh, come about in this Tennessee Valley has, has uh, meant that uh, uh, more radios, more automobiles, more electric appliances of all kinds, and uh, more products from all over the country have been bought by people of the Tennessee Valley. It's a, it's a new market, and a, and a great and growing one. And I think uh, most important, and one that we uh, mustn't uh, forget, is that this has made a great contribution to national defense. This area was where the first atomic bomb was, was made, at Oak Ridge, and it was power from TVA dams that made that possible. Uh, it's a great aluminum manufacturing center, and during the war, the fact that we had electricity available made it possible to expand aluminum production and get our airplanes in the air faster, and we think contributed to bringing the war to that much closer or sooner end. Well, Mr. Clapp, outside of these activities uh, of the war, which naturally the, the enabling act of the legislation, 
uh, calls for in the TVA as one of the major things, the national defense. How much money has the TVA actually spent on this power development of hydroelectric energy in the Tennessee Valley? Our uh, investment so far in power, as distinct from navigation and flood control facilities, would be uh, in the neighborhood of a half billion dollars, $500 million. Well, now, your insistence, sir, is that TVA is not only a regional asset, but that it is a, a national asset. That's right, Mr. Hewitt. Well, now, have you created the TVA without destroying values? After all, you, you acquired properties uh, that were pro formerly owned by private utilities. Now, did you destroy value? Did you confiscate property in this process? We uh, joined with the municipalities and some of the uh, rural electric cooperatives in that area to buy existing uh, privately owned uh, utility companies. But there was no confiscation. Uh, these were uh, bargains made across the table with, uh, with negotiations, uh, and, and the price that was paid for those properties uh, we think was fair, and, and, and uh, some think we paid too much, some think we didn't pay enough. C could you point out individuals who may have owned stock in those companies, uh, or bonds in those companies, who could come to you today and say, well, because you came along, uh, I lost $5,000 of my savings? I doubt if uh, Eddie would, uh, would uh, make that claim seriously. The bondholders in all of these negotiations uh, came out 100 cents on the dollar. The uh, um, stock values um, by those who made the negotiation for the private utilities uh, claimed they were uh, doing what, pretty well. What there's is there's your always a, an yes. argument on a horse trail. Yes. What, what are your relations today with the private utilities in your area? The private utilities that, that serve around the uh, area that we serve are, uh, are uh, neighbors of ours with interchange arrangements through physical transmission connections, and we get along uh, uh, very well as, as cooperating uh, uh, business enterprises. Mr. Clapp, I'm going to take a page out of the uh, very fine panel discussion of President Eisenhower a few days ago in which he devoted about a quarter of that broadcast and that telecast to internal security. Now, what are the problems with internal security, with communism, with subversive people, with security risks in the TVA at the present time? Uh, have you any problems with any committees before the Congress? We have no problems of that kind with any committees before the Congress, uh, Mr. Young. Our organization is uh, carefully screened. It has been from the beginning. Our selection of personnel is by uh, very careful methods, and uh, most of the employees we have on construction, of course, and uh, as a matter of fact, in operations, have been with us for some time, building these dams and these steam plants uh, through war, through a depression, and after the war. Well, now, in government employees alone, how many of you discharged in the last year as government security risks? Very, or very, subversive? Few. very, very. How few. many would you say? Oh, it would be uh, less than a half a dozen. Well, sir, now, you have, the, the TVA, I assume, is, a, is approximately completed. I mean, you have now exhausted the hydroelectric possibilities of the valley, have you not? Uh, most of the dams that, uh, well, you're right. And, and you are now, as a matter of fact, building uh, large steam plants in order to meet your power commitments, aren't you? That's right. We, we have a big program of construction on in there. Well, now, first of all, is this... Uh, is the TVA idea exportable to other areas in the United States? Do you advocate the use of the TVA plan in such areas as the Missouri, Valley, Missouri River Valley or other valleys in, in America? Well, we're careful uh, not to advocate it. Um, I personally think it would be a good idea for the Missouri Valley. I think they would uh, uh, make a more effective use of the federal dollar in the development of that stream and then building dams for flood control, navigation, and power. But we don't, uh, we stick to our own area. Well, my field, Mr. Clapp, is foreign affairs. I'd like to know, is this TVA uh, idea exploitable for such places, say, as India and the Ganges River, uh, or in the River Jordan, uh, in both Israel and in Jordan? Uh, of course, we all know the political conditions are such in the latter country that it would be very difficult. But is that a practical, exploitable idea, the TVA, for either the Ganges or the Jordan? Uh, let me mention the uh, situation in India Please. first. The, uh, uh, there is a development of uh, considerable uh, magnitude in India called the Damodar uh, River development, uh, in which the, uh, the uh, uh, officials of that agency uh, 
consciously have patterned their approach to river development after the TVA. Um, their executive officer, uh, Dr. Sudhir Sen, uh, spent about six months in training with the TVA, and uh, uh, Mr. Mozumdar, the chairman of their board of directors, uh, has been a visitor in the Tennessee Valley a number of times. But that's uh, being subsidized by the government of India through the uh, the international banking facilities available to them. Is that right? Uh, Indian capital is going into it with some uh, uh, substantial help from the international bank. Have we got anything out of po uh, point four being spent there for those purposes? Uh, it, it, I, I don't know, as a matter of fact. I wouldn't be surprised if they're getting some uh, help through point four. Now, I uh, hope what, they what are. about the Jordan That's River? I think we're all interested in it. Could you say a few words about the Jordan River? Well, I, I think the, uh, the time will come when the uh, 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 Jordan Valley will be more effectively developed for its water resources in order to make that water more useful and it may ultimately be a cause of bringing those peoples together. As but a it's a tough, tough problem. As a final question, sir, and for a very brief answer, uh, I can remember my people have lived along the Tennessee River Valley since 1787, and I can remember the days when they fought your efforts to take over our land. Now, has, the, has the old obstruction died down? I think so, Mr. Huey. If you were to go back to your home country now and uh, uh, drive up and down the uh, banks of, uh, say, Wheeler Lake, where we uh, named the dam after General Joe Wheeler, uh, that great uh, Confederate general, I think you'd find that the people, uh, uh, though they were uh, reluctant to give up their land, and I don't blame them because it was good land, <coughs> they now have seen a better day well, and they enjoy the great benefits and they're building with their own uh, efforts. Well, their thank, own thank, thank you, sir, for being with us this evening. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. John S. Young. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Gordon R. Clapp, Chairman of the Tennessee Valley Authority. More than half a century ago, Longines had earned the title the world's most honored watch. And yet today, it's still true that among the finest watches in all the world, Longines is the most honored. High honors which Longines watches have won include 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and countless prizes and awards in observatory accuracy contests. And these honors highlight a chronology of achievement unmatched in the annals of watchmaking. Yes, over a span of almost a century, Longines watches have been made ever better and better. The great prestige of a Longines watch is matched by a superiority of construction and an exquisite perfection of finish that assure, in full measure, greater accuracy and longer life for that Longines watch which you may buy tomorrow. And yet, do you know that you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50? Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion watch to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, agency for Longines Whitnor watches. Sunday evening, see it now on the CBS Television Network.